So it's here. This is the um, Analog Bay version 2 that has the Wi-Fi module built into it. Um, bear with me on this video. I've broken it up into kind of a, f a few parts and you can use the chapter markers to jump to the right section for you. First part is going to be streaming video from the module to your phone and what that looks like. Uh, the next part is going to be how you can connect to the goggles Wi-Fi and then uh, transfer files through SCP um, with kind of a command line interface. Um, and then the next part will be how to uh, a tutorial walkthrough of how to uh, connect with a PC and then another one will be how to connect with a phone. If you're a developer um, working on open source code for the goggle, uh, make sure you watch the last part of the video. There's going to be a really cool thing for uh, developing software to go alongside this module and um, I'm, I really think it'll be a cool opportunity for the open source community to collaborate with HD0 and, and get us a really cool uh, experience out of uh, the capabilities of this module. This is the analog module bay version 2 with the Wi-Fi included. It basically looks like the original. Uh, except it's got a Wi-Fi chip on the back side of the circuit board. The Wi-Fi antenna, if you're curious, is actually about right here in this corner. So just keep that in mind. Pretty interesting. Um, there's this little cutout here for a power switch. Mine broke. I actually just told them, why don't you just take those switches off of this thing because they break too easy. So I think he's going to do that. Uh, but yeah, there it is. Now let's take a look at what it, how it works. Here's some live DVR from the Nano 90 uh, that I recorded on my phone. Uh, so my phone is receiving the video over Wi-Fi and then I'm recording the sc phone screen using the phone screen record app. Um, demonstrates kind of the quality you'll expect to get. Um, I'm really enjoying having this as an option where I can just give someone my phone and say, here, now you can see what I'm seeing in my goggle, and um, they're seeing the exact same thing I see in my goggle, and they're not tethered to me with uh, HDMI cable. So it's cool for that. Um, it's not perfect because there is a little bit of delay. Um, I got it down to about a quarter second to a half second, I think. Um, and also, if the connection drops out, um, then you'll have a problem. So if I, I can kind of skip ahead here to a spot where I crashed and then I got back up and uh, basically it looks like there's some stability issues in the uh, video player. Um, this would be on like the client side on the phone. So if, if the connection gets bad, it has a hard time restoring um, proper video and then you get this psychedelic, psychedelic looking stuff coming out of it. <clears throat> now. I have found if I uh, close the player and then start the stream again, it's fine. So it's really uh, kind of an app problem, I think, to solve. But just letting you know, this is something that will happen. <laughs> kind of fun to watch, actually. Um, so I think what we really need to make this a usable thing that's more practical for everybody is um, have an app with this video player uh, capability in it that is able to kind of restart playing um, if there's ever an issue and uh, also kind of automates connecting to the Wi-Fi hotspot um, and opening up the video player so it's more of like a one button press type of situation where I can say oh yeah here you can see what I'm flying um, I'll just uh, turn on Wi-Fi and then you can uh, open up the HD0 app or whatever open source name uh, the guys come up with so that, that would be the perfect world. But yeah, today um, what you're going to do is, uh, you know, connect to the Wi-Fi manually, open up VLC, and hit play. And I'll, that whole process can take a little while, and it's a little bit clunky. Uh, but still, really cool. So the other really cool thing you can do with the Wi-Fi module is this is a full Linux computer. 
and we can communicate with the Linux OS over Wi-Fi with a command line. Um, so it'll work with command line today. It'd be really cool if someone were to make a app uh, with these capabilities that would let people, normal people, uh, access files and things like that on the goggle. But uh, yeah, here's a few things you can do. So we can ping the goggle. So now I can confirm I do have a connection to the goggle. Um, the next thing I can do is SSH into the goggle. So that's going to be this. Dot two, uh, one, two, two. And then the password is uh, HD0, I think. And now we're in. So this is the SSH terminal for the goggle. Um, now we can do some fun stuff. Let's go to the parent working directory. All right, so root. Um, so let's ls the external SD card that's mounted. Go into the movies folder. So here's all the files on the um, SD card. And I could uh, make some kind of an app to query these files and then see their sizes and then offer to pull them um, over to an uh, app on a phone or on a PC. Uh, but this is just giving you an idea of what you can do. Um, so if we want to copy a file, we can do SCP like this. Uh, let's grab the first file. and then copy it to our root. That's what that should do, and I'm just confirming that I do have a file name like that. So, yes, we have, uh, actually the first file would be 00. zero. Um, so we'll do, but we're gonna do 001TS. Looks like I'll have to switch to MP4. And then we put in the password HD0 and now it's copying over the file. Um, here you can see one of the big drawbacks of this at the moment in that uh, the download speed is only about a megabyte per second. I did see that uh, it's currently running in 802.11g mode, uh, which is pretty old and slow, um, and it, but the chip seems to support 802.11n, so that would improve speed by a little bit. Um, but yeah, this will end up pulling the file over. Um, I'll let it finish transferring and then pick up where we left off. So on the PC, if you want to connect, uh, we're going to first connect to the Wi-Fi. Um, so I'll just do that now. Uh, I'm just going to look for the HD0 hotspot. So a computer will connect to that hotspot. Um, then we need to go to media, open network stream. And this is the address. And a pro tip, if you do show more options, uh, caching is set to a second by default, but we can set that to something like 100 milliseconds. So I'll just delete one of those zeros. That's gonna make the stream 10 times faster. All right, so uncheck this so we can hit play. And there we're in. And there it is. Now, technically, I can also connect this to my uh, phone um, and play the video stream to multiple devices at once. But in my experience, what that's done is that uh, reduces the bandwidth to both. So it looks like to do that properly, um, you need to like scale back the, the bit rate uh, as more people connect. But this gives you an idea of how it works. Um, here, I'll give you a little idea of the latency. So if I hit 
play there it is if I hit pause now it stopped so it's a little bit slow but it's not too bad um, it really depends on that uh, that delay number that we put in for caching so I'll go back and yeah then you can navigate through everything go up a level so pretty cool um, going to source here we go down to expansion module um, and that's going to start mirroring my fusion so I could go into the menu there, there's our uh, band scanner so everything's working pretty cool and I can go back up a level and we're back and so it's kind of switching um, resolutions and stuff and everything is just kind of handled for us cool stuff so we turn on the Wi-Fi on the goggle and then we look for this HD0 hotspot the password is password is Divi math That'll connect up. Um, takes a little bit because my phone's going to do like an internet check and then ask me if I want to disconnect or not, which is kind of annoying. All right, now that we're connected, we can open up uh, VLC. So I'll just search for that here. So what we need to do is add stream rtsp 192.168.2.122 which is the goggle ip address then 8554 hd0 and then we're in so we're now looking at the goggle and uh, you can see how i turned on the wi-fi here so you do wi-fi on and then it gives you the ssid and the password so now I'm going to go back a level, and we'll go down to from uh, playback. The, the delay is about a second. Now I'm actually going to uh, go to another app where I can show you how I can get the delay to be a lot tighter. So this app is called uh, RTSP Player, and in this app, um, I'm seeing the delay be more like, let's see, probably a half second maybe less, which is a lot nicer. And we can tune that by going into the settings on the app. So, so let's see here, settings. Um, the main thing here is this caching buffer size. So the default for VLC is actually one second. But if I bring this down to uh, 100 milliseconds and go back, connect, um, now things are a lot snappier in here but that does also make it more unstable so let's see what i've got on this sd card so you can use this for dvr review um, it's kind of nice because then you can share it with your friends around you um, so they don't have to look inside your goggle screen or something uh, I have been using it for a little bit of DVR review stuff. It's also kind of nice because you can uh, navigate the whole UI here and everything's mirrored. So I can switch to uh, the expansion module. So we can go into the menu here. Um, I'm just kind of go through different settings. And everything works. So there's our spectrum analyzer. Pretty cool. So obviously there's a lot of capability with this Wi-Fi module, but it needs a lot of software to do it. And uh, Carl's busy working on bugs and um, video features for the goggle 
Um, so I came up with this idea um, that Carl's going to back, and that is the open source community is awesome. Goggles, open source, running Linux, all these things. Um, I think that for this to really work really well for users, there needs to be uh, a phone app or a PC app or some kind of app to interface with the Wi-Fi module and get the most out of it. Um, so there's three main things that I, I see. Um, there's an automatic connection to the Goggle Wi-Fi um, that'll automate the Wi-Fi connection process using an app. Um, and then as part of that, once you're connected, um, being able to copy uh, files like firmware update files and um, uh, DVR files from the goggle to your phone or from the phone to the goggle. That would be really good. The next one is uh, being able to stream video inside of the app and having that uh, streaming video be optimized for low latency, like 100 millisecond buffer, uh, rather than a one second buffer. Um, may maybe having some resiliency, like automatically restarting the video if it gets hung. So that's another one. And then uh, over the air firmware updates from uh, the HD0 website or from GitHub, um, push to the goggle over Wi-Fi. So you could have the phone app cache the uh, firmware files, and then when you connect to the goggle, it could uh, push the, the firmware files to the goggle. Or I, I guess you could even have the goggle um, connect to Wi-Fi directly and then pull the uh, firmware files from a web page. Um, however that works, I don't know. Um, but it's up to the community to come up with how to do that. And Carl's willing to, uh, and really is happy to provide some incentive to get these things implemented for everyone um, in the form of a $300 HD0 credit per challenge. So if you do this first challenge, uh, you get 300, you do the next one 300, and the next one 300, and so on. And that would be money that you can uh, spend on the HD0 store. Now, in order to get this done in a reasonable amount of time, so people have some kind of expectation of uh, when they might be able to use these features, uh, a six week time frame would be imposed from the point that uh, most people would get their module to start working on it. So interesting idea. Um, I hope that you take advantage of it and help everyone else out that has this module to, to really get the most out of it. I think it'll be really cool.